With iPad OS 26, we are so much closer to replacing our MacBooks with our iPads, but can it? I'm gonna say no. And here are four reasons why. I personally was very excited for iPad OS 26 when it was announced because I saw it was very, very close to Mac OS. In fact, I thought just watching the keynote that this could technically replace my laptop. I have a Mac mini, so I can do all my big processing stuff there. But when I'm out and about, I can use this as my laptop instead of a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro. You've got resizable windows. You've got full preview app on here. Real multitasking, not like weird split screen, locked in kind of thing, actual windowing. And of course, many other upgrades. But I think for me, it was just the experience that needed to be upgraded here. Now stick around to the final point because there's one like physical issue here that I haven't heard a lot of people talking about. But for me, it was kind of the biggest thing I noticed at first. All right, so let's dive in. Reason number one, and that is that the UI is still just a little bit clunky when compared to Mac OS. Window resizing exists, but you're in this weird state of like having to throw windows over to get them to readjust their size, or you have to click the three little dots, the sideways stoplight to sort of position them how you want. Both are great, the fact that we can do that now, but it's just not as fluid. There's also this weird thing where there's a menu bar at the top of the screen now, basically like your finder bar on a Mac that hides itself and pops out when you need it. And when you're swiping down to try and get or touching on those stoplight controls on a window, you're constantly accidentally running into that menu bar and that's a little clunky as well whether you're using your finger or the trackpad or mouse. And that sort of brings us to the second part of this point, which is that knowing whether to tap on the screen or use your mouse is still this weird, like there were times where I'd go to tap and be like, oh, I should do this with my mouse because it's more precise. And just being confused there, again, just adds to that clunkiness. Now I'm sure the more I use this like dedicated, I would probably pick and choose. And honestly, I would probably touch the screen less because having to be here typing and then using a trackpad is fine but when you're having to be here typing and then going like this and you're pushing on the screen and it's wobbling around, yeah, not the best. Right, so reason number two pertains to me. It might not pertain to everyone, but there's quite a few apps that I actually download on my Mac from the internet, not the app store. So whether it's like a specific toolbar app or maybe some sort of app to download YouTube videos if I need to reuse my content or something like that, you can't do that here. You have to download things from the app store. So if you're someone who's used to downloading a bunch of apps from different websites and different like maybe lower level software developers and sites and stuff like that, that's something you can't do here. Reason number three is no clamshell mode. So when I use a laptop, I usually, now that I have the Mac mini, I do it less, but whenever I wanna plug into an external monitor, I don't like using my Mac Air or Pro, my MacBook Air, MacBook Pro as a second monitor. If I'm plugging into a monitor, it's because I want the bigger screen. So I like going clamshell. So that means if you don't know, you can plug in your MacBook, close the lid, and it will use your display as your main display. With iPad, if you plug it in, you can definitely use an external display, but when you close the iPad up, it just turns off the display because it thinks you're not using the iPad. So clamshell mode still doesn't seem to work here, which is a real bummer. Also, if you're used to using multiple external monitors, that's not something you can really do here either. And then finally, reason number four, which I alluded to earlier, like the one functional thing here, when you're using a MacBook, the weight of the MacBook is underneath the keyboard. So when you're putting it on a desk, when you're putting it on your lap, when you're laying it on a pillow on the couch, the top half is a screen, it's very light. With an iPad using, you know, the Pro keyboard, for instance, all of the weight is in the iPad. So when you have it on your lap, when you have it on a pillow, this is happening a lot because there's so much weight up here, especially when you're tapping on the screen because it is a touch screen, this happens a lot, which doesn't naturally happen on a MacBook because you don't touch the screen, but also like even like moving around and stuff, you don't have to be scared of it tipping forward because again, all the weight's down here. This is a big issue for me. If I'm going to replace my laptop with an iPad, it has to be able to work really well on my lap. And I think that's kind of the main reason I use it is using it on the couch, using it like sitting on a bench somewhere, right? 
along with sort of like still kind of clunky user interface, the user experience is still a little bit clunky. And I don't really know how you fix that because Apple doesn't want to make this folio, keyboard folio heavier. They wanna keep it light because you want the whole thing to be light. So adding unnecessary weight to the bottom just makes the whole entire thing heavier. Until iPads can weigh like half a pound, and this actually weighs more than that, that's the only way I really see that functionally working. And this is something I didn't even really think of when I was watching like the iPad OS 26 keynote, like the actual experience of using the device. I was just thinking all software, but the actual physicality and the form here matters just as much, especially for a device you're using on the go and kind of throwing around and whipping out and, you know, putting different places as compared to a de desktop that's very just there and, you know, whatever, you don't move it around a lot. And while with an iPad, you're used to doing this a lot and like holding the weight in your hand and using it or drawing on it with the pencil, being in laptop mode just doesn't work. So that sort of allows me to take a step back and look at the iPad as big picture here. Cause I still think there's a lot of questions on like, who is it really for? If it's not replacing my MacBook and it's not my smartphone that I can keep in my pocket, I think there's not a very specific person that it's made for, but I definitely think anyone who needs to make use of the stylus or needs to have some lightweight device that they don't need to type on much to consume media or content or play games. Artists, this is like a really great tool, right? Like there's so much usability in an iPad, especially with Apple Pencil Pro. Using this in that way is perfect. Anyone who takes a lot of handwritten notes, maybe you're a college student, or maybe you just like taking notes when you're listening to audiobooks or something. Great experience writing on. In fact, big shout out to Paperlike. They did send out their latest screen protector, which does make writing on the iPad feel that much more like paper, as well as they sent out their little tips here for the Apple Pencil Pro, which just gives that much more grip, so it's even more of a paper feel and then they did send out this folio case which I've actually really been enjoying. Apple's folio cases are pretty expensive and this just has a certain durability and I love the flap going over the pencil. I just think any of these tablets, e-ink or not, that have a writing utensil that sticks on the side, even though these magnets are really impressive and really hard, so many things can happen where it just gets knocked off like that. So having that is perfect. So thanks to Paperlike for sending that out. If you wanna pick up some Paperlike products for yourself, you can check the link in the description. I definitely think if you're a creative, if you like taking notes, maybe you're a student and you're using the Apple Pencil a lot, these added features in iPad OS 26 are really great for you, but I've also heard it be the other way. I think people who use apps on here for creative, they just want full screen apps. They don't want to window things necessarily. I've heard some people around the internet saying that, like I actually miss, I don't want things to be in tiny little windows. I want it to be to full screen, which you can do full screen here, but giving you the option is just nice to have. And you do have to sort of switch up your workflow from recent versions of iPad OS because you have this new window file system here, which I think in the long run is helpful, but I just wanted to mention that as I've heard people kind of push back on it a little bit actually. People who use iPad a lot. So so oh, is iPad OS 26 finally the upgrade that replaces your MacBook? I still can't say yes. It is so close, but I think even going outside of the software here, there's still a lot of form that just doesn't fit the laptop feel here and some things that just need to be fixed. But I don't know if they can be fixed. And I think that still keeps us in this dilemma of what is an iPad really for? Again, I think for certain people, certain professionals, it is a, an incredible device. But for me personally, I don't necessarily need one. That said, if you have an iPad and you haven't updated to iPad OS 26, which should be released this week, I think, in the full release, it's been in beta for a while, I would say go ahead and upgrade, see what it's like. You get that liquid glass look and a lot more functionality for what you're doing here. Try it out, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching. On this channel, we talk about tech that marries form and function. We like tech that improves our lives and looks good while doing so. And we'll never review or talk about a product here that we don't think is worth your time. So if that sounds cool to you, please subscribe, like this video for more, watch this video next. Links in the description, and we'll see you all in the next one.